double bubble on the stubble. Crow has a little help with the woodies right as on. the first of the crops come off. Good lad. Countryside terrorists. They destroy property, kill birds, and they intimidate. We visit a game farm coming to terms with an anti-attack. It's a hell of a lot of work to go into it and to someone to ruin it overnight. Plus, seeker deer stalking in Ireland. Paul Childerley is guided by Mr. Seeker himself, John Fenton, with Jason Doyle bringing up the rear. We've got news, we've got hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Day on a rape stubble is an important moment in Andy's farming calendar. The harvest focuses the woodies on the stubble fields and away from his standing crops. The numbers have been building into the multiple thousands, so there's some good shooting and effective pest control to be had. Plus, importantly, the shot birds are easily retrieved. Today is the last chance we're going to get to have a go on the rape. If you look down here, it's all, it's all starting to grow. See it all chitting. We've had a lot of rain this week, so it's all growing. And once that starts growing, the pigeons just go off it. So there's quite a lot of pigeons feeding here. They've been feeding on some standing wheat down the end there. They've been hammering, the, absolutely hammering it for the last three weeks. But I'm loath to shoot them. I did shoot a few, dropped them onto, uh, we've got a set side strip down there. I shot a few on that, but just couldn't do anything to them really. Uh, it's not easy putting bangers up this time of year with everything being so dry. So this is a good opportunity to shoot a few pigeons today which I intend to do because now this is growing they're going to be straight back on the wheat again so they're going to be a problem. With a good day promised it's one of the few times in the year Andy will invite friends and family to shoot with him. There's even a farmhouse breakfast for everyone. Joining him in the hide today will be 13 year old Jack and his dad John Carrington who works for Blaza in the UK and keeps Andy supplied with shotguns. Jack has only been pigeon shooting once before, so this could be an eye-opener. He's obviously a growing lad, so how do, yeah. you, how do you make that decision on what to give him? Um, he started off with a 410 and it became quite clear sort of last year that he's sort of outgrown it. Um, isn't quite big enough really to deal with a 12 ball, um, so he's gone on to a 20 ball, which we've used one of the Sarah Pollens for him. Um, so it's a little bit lightweight, so he can manage the weight of the gun quite well and the recoil seems to suit him quite well as well. The lowest part of the hide is in the middle where you're going to be, so they're going to come straight up the middle, all right? Yep. Okay, that is the plan. And uh, once we get a few real ones, I'll show you how to set real ones up. There you go, go and put that where you want. And make sure you put it in the right place. Go on, go on, go on. No, that way. <laughs> there, that's it. It's, see their tails are bent? You get a crack in the ground, stick them in there like that, okay? Yep. He's a learner, he's a good learner. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be bald by the end of the day. <laughs> there you go, Jack. I'm using enforcer decoys today. We've had a lot of rain this morning. And uh, real pigeons, they get wet, they go black. I'm going to put these out until we get a few real ones. And the weather's like, it's sorting itself out now, which is quite nice. Um, so I'm putting a few, few of these out just to get a few real ones under the belt. Um, but once we get them, I'll start dragging these in. I'll probably use put the plastic ones behind the hide because we're away from a hedge. We've got a big oak tree behind. They come up through here on the left, there's a gap. They come through there and through here. You've shot here so many times though, we've had some good bags here. This is a good area, so I know it's a good flight line. Um, so, right, I'm gonna get on. I'm just gonna give 
Jack a bit of bit of You're coaching. You're talking faster than normal. You're, you're excited well, today. Well, I'm not excited. I just want to get on. I've, I've had to set everyone else up. They're bloody useless. So they, they come here. They've got no gear. Uh, Gary's got no gear. I have to supply him. And uh, I've got Jack here. He, he's a good lad. He's helping me out. Come he's on, Jack. Helping. He is helping. He's a good lad. Jolliffe, waste of space. Jolliffe, plus one, waste of space. Crow has one eye on his guests in the other hides, one eye on Jack, and another one on pigeons. That's one more eye than he was issued with. He wants everyone to have a good time, and he's worried that the woodies may have already moved on because of the germinating rape seeds. Not a pigeon in the sky, but I had. The Crattenhead always used to say to me, uh, rain by seven, stop by eleven. And he must be looking down on me today because it has done that. It's just right. Stop just, just right, it has. So um, I think we're going to have a good day. Weather wise, anyway. I'm on fire. <laughs> Need a headband like McEnroe. I do, don't I? Yeah, I do. So always shoot underneath it. Get it sitting on top of the barrel. Okay. Yeah. How's that gun shoot for him? Does it shoot high or shoot fairly flat? Uh, yeah. Right well, as they're coming in, they're coming in, they're dropping. They don't look like they're dropping half the time. They yeah. come down level, down level, down level. So always just get, just get it sitting on top of the barrel. Okay. Well done. Good lad. Good lad. Well done, Jack. I have both of them. Got one each. Well done, mate. That's good. That's what it's all about. That's made my day, that is. Nah. He, he took the other one of the two and I thought, mm. Then when he shot, my one flared up nice. So it worked quite well. He got his and he got mine, so well, that was good. He ought to put the gun away now and go home, I would. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you make a bag. It, you've got that one that's right in here close, and you shoot that one that's a little bit further, you know when you want to shoot that one. That one's 30 yards, bang, kill that. You make sure you kill that first one. It's all about killing that first one. That's a stock dove. See how his old wings are going like crazy. I was just saying to Jack, always, always take the back one, let the front one come as let the front one come right in. Just take the back one. You've got loads of time with the second one then. Got loads of time with the second one. Got a couple of runners out there, I want to get the dog on. A couple out there on their back. I've got a couple out there on their back. A couple of runners, I'll take the dog out and get them sorted out. Yeah, before it starts getting too lively. Boy. After everyone has some shooting, he pops down to see Brody and Dave. Their shots are echoing across the field and scaring the birds near us. This is an important consideration when setting up multiple shooting spots to cover a greater area. As their clicker shows, they've been in the action, as Andy predicted. Had a good day, chaps. Excellent, yeah. It's gone downhill now. <laughs> Your party's been crashed. <laughs> Oh, that was a good shot, Andy. Well done. <laughs> so it's your party, so you can gate crash of the hides. Is that the case? Well, what it was, we was up there and I was scaring the birds that was coming to us, <laughs> and I was watching. And Brody missed about three. That's the only three that he's missed all day. So I thought that's my excuse to get down there. But no, I thought I'd just get down there and have a few shots, catch up with Dave. And he gets stuck in for half an hour before checking on Gary and Rob. That means that Jack, John and David are left alone. Now Crow never leaves the nest unattended and with the crow away, even David will play.
Two hours later, we call it a day. The birds have kept coming until nearly eight o'clock. So have you enjoyed it then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. You shoot better than Dad? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I wish I'd spent a bit more time, could have spent a bit more time with you and... Uh, could have seen my Andy Crow shot. I wish I'd seen your Andy Crow shot. I wish I had. But you, you've got witnesses and it's all back, it's all up in there. But no, he, he shot well today, considering it's only his uh, second time out on the pigeons. and. Um, he's done really well. He, he shot some stonking birds. Surprised me a couple of times. I thought, well, I'm gonna, I know he's not going to hit that. I'm going to end up shooting it. And, but he, he folded it up. So, but no, he's done really well. It may have been a bit more stressful than a normal pigeon shooting outing for Andy, making sure everyone is having a good time. But it's one Jack will remember for a while. Well done, Crow. And Jack and John, lucky boys. Now, as you could see, you should never leave him alone with other people's property. It is David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The Game Fair has cancelled appearances by Mark Avery, Chris Packham and Jay Tiernan at the Game Fair Theatre. It acted under pressure from the shooting organisations Basque, the Countryside Alliance and the GWCT. They claim they're afraid of the media these three antis might put out after being confronted with questions about their attacks on shooting sports and gamekeeping. Charlie is running the Game Fair Theatre at Hatfield House this weekend, 26th to the 28th of July 2019. For his response to this cancellation, click on the link on the screen. Mr Packham and Mr Avery are running a series of events leading up to the opening of the grouse season on the 12th of August. Among them, Carsington Water in Derbyshire will host the 2019 Hen Harrier event organised by Wild Justice on the afternoon of the 11th of August. Local pro shooting campaigners are planning countermeasures. Here is Simon Grace who plans to attend on the League Against Cruel Sports public meeting in Bradford on the 10th of August. What I want to do is go to this um, campaign with people and with all the facts and figures which are all here and basically add these out to people and say look, ground shooting is beneficial, it's good and not bad. Don't listen to the lies that these guys are pumping out, purely and simply because they just want to ban shooting and it's not ground shooting, it's every form of shooting. Some say grouse shooting helps other species thrive, others say blah blah blah. According to research by the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust and part funded by the RSPB, the new study reveals ending grouse moor management risks the decline and possible extinction of a range of ground nesting bird species. At its launch, Chris Packham appeared to lose his temper on social media, posting the words, blah, blah, blah. Now in secondary school, you might expect some double maths followed by some biology, but at a secondary school in Cheshire last week, students were given an hour long lesson by the animal rights charity Animal Aid on the benefits of veganism. Here is some of the literature handed out by the guest lecturer to the year seven class at Poynton High School in Cheshire. A concerned father contacted us saying he felt the presentation and the leaflets were unbalanced and biased. And when his daughter had explained she enjoyed shooting and fishing, she was told it was only because her parents influenced her. We're continuing to try and get a comment from the school. A North of England MP had a photo opportunity with a Merlin chick. Hexham MP Guy Opperman met with South Tyndale gamekeepers to learn about their livelihood, communities and the environmental work. On a tour of the Narsdale estate, head gamekeeper John Palmer showed the MP a merlin nest hidden in the heather, supporting three healthy, weak old chicks. The UK government is planning to make shooting a sport of the rich. A Home Office consultation on firearms licensing could land the shooting community with a £48 million bill for new medical arrangements. The government says that cracking down on legal gun owners like this will protect the public. This goes back on what the government agreed four years ago. Basque calls the consultation disappointing. You can respond to the consultation via the link in the description below. Antis have published a map of shoots with encouragement to go and have a look around. It says it took the map from the British Game Alliance membership list. A chihuahua snatched by a seagull has led to calls for larger gulls to be put back on the general licence. 24-year-old Becca Hill and her six-year-old daughter from Paynton in Devon were left distraught after the birds swooped down and took their four-year-old dog, Gizmo. Charlie's been out and about fighting for hunting tourism. 
TRT World is an English language news service that debated hunting last week. Charlie went up against the anti-hunting Born Free Foundation. Click on the link on the screen to watch this in full. The US Congress is currently debating a ban on trophy imports to the USA. The last time the US banned trophy imports, it led to locals in Zimbabwe killing off 200 unwanted lions. Spain has introduced a tax on trophy imports. Instead of taxing heads on the value of the head, Spanish customs are asking for a tax based on the value of the hunt. Thanks to Pedro de Ampuro for this story. An anti-vegan YouTuber and his friend who ate raw squirrel in front of vegans at a market have been fined £600. YouTuber Gatis Lagjins, known as Frigga, and his friend were arrested for eating the squirrels at the Soho Vegan Food Market in London in March this year. The pair denied using disorderly behaviour likely to cause harassment, alarm or distress. They were found guilty yesterday at Westminster Magistrates Court. Anti-hunters are destroying high seats in Poland. This picture posted online shows a high seat they hit in a Polish forest. On this dramatic video on Twitter it shows an elephant that's just had enough. The elephant charges a jeep full of tourists on safari in South Africa and the driver reverses for his life. A Texan has discovered a rare talent in his horse. If you have trouble with wild boar and you'd like to go out riding, this could be the horse for you. Lysitz Festival of Hunting in Peterborough held a young handlers class this year. 16 young handlers stepped forward representing foxhounds, beagles, bassets, draghounds and bloodhound packs. Winner was Sam Watkins of the Essex and Suffolk Foxhounds. Sam was presented with the Captain Farker Cup, a branded hunting horn from Hunting UK and a copy of Kay Gardner's new book Hunting On. In the USA, hunters have launched a Adopt a Game Area project. You can sponsor public grassland in Michigan and help pheasants, deer, turkeys, wildfowl, cottontails and songbirds. Visit michiganpheasantsforever.org. Thanks to viewer Mike Corney for sending this in. And finally, viewer Rhys Morris shot a crow in South Wales and he thinks it looks like a vulture. He has no idea how the bird lost its feathers around its head and neck, with friends on Facebook suggesting everything from lice to stress. If you have any ideas, please leave a comment below. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, in last week's news, we reported on the latest of the game farm attacks. Even though the owners are still shaken by the actions of these masked thugs, they have agreed to talk to us about rural terrorism. Well, this is one of the panels that's been damaged and we've had to take out and replace where they've cut through and they've done every single run all the way through. Andrew Farris walks us around the patched up pens on his rearing field. Like literally they've gone right up through and taken all of the wire off for every single run this way so all the different ages were mixed again and then from the other side of the rearing field they broke through and then so they mix both sides from a week old to seven weeks old. We're all mixed together and the whole lot was out. There was probably 300 birds left in the sheds. Everything else was out. A few weeks ago, this is what greeted the family as they came to check on the birds. What was the first thing you saw? Uh, just birds everywhere, sheds ripped to pieces, feeders laying everywhere, uh, gas bottles cut off, thrown on the floor, uh, young chicks dead through not having any gas because all the gas lines have been cut. Uh, drinkers have been trashed, they had no water. So yeah, it was um, yeah, it was quite a devastating thing to see in the morning really. And birds everywhere of different ages. Uh, the fox damage from the morning. Where they've been let out during the night, in the morning they killed a lot. So that we picked up laying around where the foxes had killed them. What did you do? Did you call in reinforcements? Yes, it, I was really lucky that I rung a lot of friends that were their builders, all sorts of trades and a lot of people coming out. We had probably 15 people here to help fix all the runs up and walk the birds back in because we spent the whole, all the day walking birds back in to get them in the run, sorting their ages out, if we could, into the right groups. Um, if it weren't for everyone coming to help, it wouldn't have happened. We wouldn't have got them all away. So. And you reckon you've got how, um, what percentage of birds back in? Probably about 80% I reckon we've got back in, 70 to 80% of what was let out because the whole field was out, everything. So, uh, But we've lost a lot into outer pens that shouldn't be out with bits in still um, that are obviously too small and the older birds are going to pick on them if they're left. So we're trying to sort that as well. 
This is not a commercial rearing operation. Andrew's family runs a couple of syndicate shoots in the Kent area. The birds are for them. No birds, no shoot. They can't be sure, but they think they've lost two to 3,000 birds in the raid. The worst thing is, is you feel violated that some people have come in during the night and smashed up everything that your family's got and even finding their tools left in the morning, crowbars, it's a bit unnerving that you know that they've been around during the night. How has it affected the rest of your family? Because it is very much a family business, isn't it? Well, it, my grandma, she's struggling to sleep at the minute because she's worried about what could happen again and come back. My dad's moved to the rearing field now and living on the rearing field due to the fact of worrying that they'll come back again because if it happens and we lose that amount of birds, that's, that's us. that'll be our business done because we won't be able to get back to that because we've obviously finished hatching now, so what birds we've got are what we need. My cousin Eloise, she runs on the rearing field, she works here all the time, and like she's panicking that someone's going to come back or something's going to happen during the night. I mean, I was devastated when I see it. I, didn't, I nearly shed a tear, to be honest. All the hard work that goes into this and the long hours, the sleepless nights now, and it's, yeah, it's a hell of a lot of work to go into it and to someone to ruin it overnight. Kent Police say they are investigating and officers are appealing for anyone with information to call the appeal line. This is not a victimless crime. Unfortunately, attacks like this are well organised, coordinated and, it would appear, on the increase. Fences can be mended, birds replaced, but the psychological impact of this kind of attack does not go away so easily. Now let's lighten the mood a bit and head to Ireland for the latest barrels and brass. Around ten and a half thousand years ago, this emerald isle was a perfect habitat for browsing by Irish elk or giant deer, plus some close relatives of the red deer we know today, and a healthy population of reindeer grazing on the mosses and shrubs. These have sadly now all gone. The current red deer inhabitants, once thought to have been descendants from the native stock, are now believed to have been brought over from Britain by a Neolithic people around 3300 BC. They almost became extinct in the 20th century when only around 60 were left, but they've now made a comeback to approximately a thousand. Following in the footsteps of these ancient beasts, a more modern beast, Paul Childerley, has come to this wonderful landscape, invited by Jason Doyle to help thin out another import. Seeker deer were introduced in Powers Court Park, County Wicklow in 1860. They escaped and now number about 20,000. Even though prolific, against these hills and mountains they're hard to find and even harder to stalk. Luckily for us we have John Fenton of OB hunting along with us for his guidance and skills stalking in these mountains. Basically John said these are the ones that come up earlier. Keep going in front of us on this ridge line. Apparently there's a big plane up on the top. Oh sorry, plane on the other side. So we're gonna carry up through this, this gorge and then hopefully might bump something in one of these little gullies. Some of this terrain is heavy going, but after several miles and a few thousand feet of climbing, we come across our first opportunity. Maybe it was the heavy breathing, but this one makes us and heads for the never-ending hills. Yeah, a little bit too personal. Yeah, basically, good stalk though, good stalk right in. And uh, used every type of bit of uh, ground we could find, couldn't we, get right in. Obviously they literally, what were they? 25, 30 metres away? Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, just want to make sure. Took the time. Their um, vision's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. They're on it, straight, straight away. They're on it and they, 
they, they, they're really on it and they really, and they see yeah. something, they really know what they're seeing. Yeah. I imagine through the season they get more pressure, they, they get sharper and sharper. Yeah. And the stands are 600 yards, 700 yards, yeah. and you make a mistake, and oh, away. The, the pin is straight, yeah. straight away. Yeah. And after that, then the light will put on them, and it's set in the air. Yeah, they tell everybody else in the area. And yeah, they're yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. White tails are up. Yeah. And you're left feeling frustrated. Yeah. For another long walk. Again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and another long walk it is as we push on over the next brow. I'm even starting to sound Irish. Where we come across a hind and her calf tucked away from the rest of the crowd. The wind is blowing hard up here. If we get it right, that's good for covering the smells and sounds of us approaching. As far as they are, even with the Sacco 85 Carbon Light in 270 with 156 grain game head ammunition, Paul knows that sometimes a little patience and time can lead to better opportunities. After sitting it out for a good 20 minutes, the wind is not giving up, so Paul tries to gain a little more ground. After another wait, he decides that there is no shot this time. The morning pushes on and so do our team, between hills and trees, deeper into the landscape. So the game has just changed quite significantly as we've come in to the forest. That's, that's what I love about this. We spend like two, three hours out in the howling gale on the mountain and all your senses sort of shut down. And then when you come into the forest and it just goes quiet again. And the dog started to indicate deer and you can hear stuff, you can see stuff, your eyes stop watering and it just kind of awakens all the, the hunting instincts again, isn't it? We're seeing fresh sign, looking into little gaps and it just, ah, I guess it was a difficult day on the mountain, you're kind of plunging around in the wind, struggling to catch your breath and even, even walk a lot of the time, but just coming in here now, it just really feels like the, the hunt has started and hopefully we'll be able to pick our way down here and, and get it on those deer we saw from the top. High on a ridge, we glass the distinctive white tails of a hind and a yearling. Making sure this time, Paul gets as close as he can and settles unseen, ready to take the shot. Another one now. Yeah, man. Very good, thank you. Not uh, just a slight bit, eh? Oh. Oh. What a what a walk. For the record, 147 meters. Was it? Yeah, I just put it smack on him. Yes, you boys made me work for it, I must admit. Great in it for unbelievable grain. Beautiful place. Yeah. Beautiful place. You must be seriously fit. Well, I would like to think I'm fit. You are? There's no need to think. I've been following you all morning. You I'm... used to be fit. I don't know. If you're doing that and carrying them off the hill, you carry everything off of here? Yeah. yeah. Everything? Yeah. The only problem now is you've shot two. Oh, uh, yeah. And you've two hands. One for each hand. <laughs> I'll, I'll manage to carry them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can manage that. I'll give it a go anyway. That was great. Putting in the work really pays off, from the people that build the equipment, those that make the clothing, to those that learn the craft and spend the time studying and practicing their skills. The work doesn't stop here. To make good use of this harvested meat, there's still a long, long job to do. If you'd like to know more about Sacco, then go to sacco.fi. 
Thank you, Team Ireland. And there will be more from Jason over the weekend when the new episode of Field Sports Ireland is out. Look out for that. And now from Ireland to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Carpathian Hunting is on a wild boar driven hunt in Romania with a side order of Golden Jackal. It's a new upload of a hunt from last season. The Buchanan Hunts This Is Africa channel is after Markor in Tajikistan. This is the Asian animal that's really only kept alive by hunting. And the mountain landscape is immense too. Welcome to our new subscriber Gao Trang channel. Air gunning is immensely popular in Southeast Asia and he is a Vietnamese YouTuber specialised in air gun hunting videos. Staying on air guns, Corvid Hunter in the UK flicks two fingers at Wild Justice and puts out this film, Air Rifle Hunting Meat for the Table, about shooting wood pigeons. Wild Justice says it's illegal to shoot wood pigeons solely in order to eat them. Jaff Jefferson goes for 100% crop protection in his new film via the South Somerset Ferreters channel. He is out protecting barley, some of which has been flattened by recent rain, providing a kind of wood pigeon begin hill. Welcome new channel Custom Rifle Hunters to YouTube. They are a family of a dad, a dog and three sisters who make films like this one about shooting rabbits. And they got in touch with me. Tommy from Rural Pest Control Whitwell has a new film out. He's at rabbit shooting with an added fox using both 22LR and 178MR. And finally, move over David Attenborough. This film shows how one hunting concession in Zambia, in partnership with local people, has restored one of Africa's wildernesses for its wildlife and its communities. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the I symbol top right or check this film's description. If if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the Weekly Top 8, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now we also have another new series coming up this week. You may remember Field Sports Africa. Well, the same team is bringing us African Hunter, made by South Africans for South Africans, but we're putting it out on Field Sports Channel because we want to spread the word about hunting in Africa. Here's the promo. Africa, one of the most popular hunting destinations on the planet. South Africa, a land that offers a large diversity of game, highly sought after by hunters. Hunting is an ancient form of survival, still practiced around the world as an expression of that instinct given to man to endure. Today, there are men and women who have been trained to guide these thrill-seekers through this wild journey. Anything can happen in a split second and it can completely destroy you. These professional hunters are tasked with one of the toughest jobs on this planet. To make dreams come true in an uncontrollable environment. If the hunter doesn't get his animal, we fail at our job. With the pressure mounting, they only have their experience to call on. Seeing people accomplish their dreams is an absolute rush in itself. Adversity, action, adrenaline. This is African Hunter. That show is out on Friday when we will all be at the game fair at Hatfield House in Hertfordshire and I will be hosting the Carter Jonas Game Fair Theatre, so I look forward to seeing you there. 
We are back with the show next week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. And of course, you can pop your email address into our register uh, box at the bottom of the page. And we'll contact you with a newsletter about Field Sports Britain, which is at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. That's it. I'll see you next week. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>